And welcome to the race by race preview for Shantin on Sunday, Centenary Sprint Cup Day, an even bigger day for you, Paul Lally. Happy birthday. Thank you very much, Mark. A plus three course and uh, the first race gets underway at one o'clock local time over the 2,000 metres and Darcy Joy, he's had one start over the 2,000 and he ran second, Wonder Years. He's a horse that was a winner over 2,200 metres two starts ago, placed 2,000 last time. Super Hong Kong, visor off, blinkers go back on. Special Hedge last start winner goes up seven pounds in weight for it. Sharp and bright, the blinkers off, the cheek pieces are on and Little Fairy will be minus the tongue tie. Straight to the front here, Paul goes Special Hedge. They couldn't catch him last time he did that. No, and that's, uh, that's, he'll try and do exactly the same thing here. Darcy Joy gets a, gets a claim. Uh, he had 10 pounds last time, he gets five this time he can go forward winning steps is the backup horse he's backing up from um, Wednesday night and he should get a nice run like he did on Wednesday uh, jubilation with the wide draw I just wondered with that first bend coming up and other horses like to lead him they might just be a little bit more conservative We'll have a look at his win shortly, Jubilation. But this is the victory of a special hedge last time. That was 1800. Jubilation was in this race also. Uh, Sharp and Bright runs sixth. Uh, are you taking any of these out of this race into this race? Yeah, look, I do like um, the, the horse here, uh, Special Hedge. I've got him in, uh, in the numbers. Stepping up to 2,000 metres looks OK for him. And Sharp and Bright hasn't been racing too badly as well. He's another one I'll, I'll take out of the race. But as you can see, Special Hedge, he just kept fighting here um, all the way down the straight. Looked like he was uh, going to get beaten and beaten. But he's, he's uh, quite a tough horse, Special Hedge, and he's really improved this season. I think the 2000 looks ideal. Yeah, super contented who finished alongside as racing in career best form at two. Jubilation wins this one course and distance on the 23rd of December. You know, what we get from one to years, he just keeps going the same speed. Wouldn't matter how many rounds he goes. Yeah, I just wonder what Jubilation's going to do from Barrier 9 with that first bend coming up with a sort of pace underneath him. There was no pace this day and he managed to get to the front and lead easily enough. He didn't lead at his next start, so we'll see what happens. Nicholson returns. I thought uh, he's coming down to a winning rating now as well. And he just took a little while to get through that gap. And once he got through the gap, he finished off strongly. And there was a lot of money this day also for Little Fairy and he ran really well. So his second start over the longer trip, I think both those two horses can run well. Both have trialled since two Nicholson returns and Little Fairy and both have trialled well. Just a couple of sleeps ago it feels like Winning Steps was racing on the all weather. It was. It was Wednesday night. There he is in the black and gold colours. He went off at 5.5 in this race. Drew Barry number two and was beaten a short head. Switches back to the turf. A surface he's won over the 1800 metres on. Yeah, so he's up to the 2000 metres here by Piero, so should be okay for him. Look, he, he, he ran nicely. Yeah, I thought he was entitled to win the race, but the horse on the inside just kept fighting and uh, Blissful Star and ended up beating him. So, look, he, I just wonder if two runs at a short period of time how it's going to suit this horse. So, I was just happy to watch. He's not in, but uh, who is the makeup of your first four for race one? Going to go with a well rated horse here, and Nicholson's return did run that third in his last start. I think he can win. Little Ferry coming out of the same race. Special Hedge comes out of a really strong form race uh, when uh, Super Contented, who ran second, has been running very well and sharp and bright out of that race. So well, I think we showed the two main form races 2, 10, 6, and 9. Zach Purton is who strike early in the first with Nicholson returns. Race number two is a class five race over the 1600 metres and it gets underway at 1.30 local time. Starship 80, he raced on Wednesday night. Diamond Diamond goes up to the 1600 metres. Fast Pass has had five trials since his last start. Happy Hunk has the hood off and the cheek piece is going on. Charmander steps from the 1400 to the 1600. Angels Hunter, two starts this season for two seconds. Brilliant Pioneer and Brother Pearl both go to the mile. General winner, visor off, crossover nose band off, cheek pieces go back on. Eagle Run has the cheek pieces and the shadow roll off. The cross nose band is added and Star of Glory is a two-time course and distance winner. He does have pace Star of Glory, Paul, but he is drawn wide. Happy Hunk and Fast Pass, who has shown speed during the race, but knocked up in the run. Yeah, he has, hasn't he? But uh, he should be able to get across. Uh, Star of Glory, I think, from that wide draw push on. It's a long run to the first bend over the 1600. Happy Hunk, Eagle Run's drawn nice. Nicely, as has Angels Hunter, brilliant pioneer, never far away as well. Smart Beauty, look, he used to race forward, but he's been racing back and he's been a lot more successful from when he runs back. So 
I think they'll go back once again with him. And here he is in the first replay at two Paul Smart Beauty running second in this race, one of his best, if not his best performances so far in Hong Kong. Diamond Diamond was running on two, Eagle Run drops off, and there was a lot of money this race for Brilliant Pioneer. It was, wasn't there? Look, I thought Diamond Diamond didn't get the clearest of runs down the straight. It took a little while to get out. Once he did get out, he hit the line really nicely. Uh, good run for also from uh, Smart Beauty. So I'm going to take both these two out of it. This was only a first start um, in Class 5 uh, for uh, Diamond Diamond. I think he's in total improve, stepping up to the 1,600 metres as well. Looks ideal the way he hit the line. It comes down from barrier number 9 to barrier number 2 does Diamond Diamond. We go to an X-ray play, Brilliant Pioneer, Arthur's Kingdom on the pace. Angels Hunter has been very consistent and Starship 80 has had two more starts following this race. I know. Look, I'm, I'm going to leave him out just carrying the big weight with that sort of tough run that he had on the all-weather on Wednesday. But I'm going to put Angels Hunter in. I thought it was a good run once again. He's yet to win here in Hong Kong, but there's numerous placings. And Charton's been his uh, best uh, course here. He's run second uh, a couple of times. Only had three goes over the mile and he's been placed once. So he's quite a consistent horse over the distance. So he, he's going to go in for me. So Starship 80 was a nice enough win, but as you say, he's had plenty of runs this season. Yes, he's about to appear in our next replay too with Starship 80. And it's not from Wednesday night. It was the race after that one where he runs second over what looked to be an unsuitable 1,400 metres. He made up a lot of ground, but as you also said, Paul, he had a very tough run on Wednesday night. Charmander was well backed in this race going back to Sharks and he was green lamped. Yeah, and he's up to a mile, which looks ideal for him as well. So, look, he's going to go in for me, Charmander. You can see him finishing off nicely and he looks like uh, the mile's going to really suit him at this stage. I mean, look, the thing with Starship 80 is he, he's a bit of an iron horse, isn't he? Uh, how many He's had 13 run, uh, 12 runs already this season. This will be start number 13. So... Uh, Look, he's, he's holding his condition well. He's rivaling Medicalite, the stablemate of Starship 80, both Class 5 specialists. One Heart One is in our last replay, running third. Beaten favourite last time. Happy Hunk needs to improve. One Heart One's been back to the trial since this race. He's had a quiet trial. Boy, he's costly. Yeah, you liked him last time, didn't you? Yeah, this week. <laughs> he, well, look, I'm similar because of his Chartin record. I looked at him and I thought, oh, yep, he's obviously going to have his opportunity. But he's eight zip at Chartin, so I think that tells the story. So, no, not for me. And uh, the other one is just fading out there too, Happy Hunk. So they're out. No one heart one, nor Happy Hunk. Who is in? Going to go with uh, Diamond Diamond. I thought it was a good run for him. The 1600 looks ideal. Uh, he's on top. Angels Hunt has been consistent. Smart Beauty's going really well over uh, since they've been running, racing him a little bit more quiet and Charmander in there for fourth up and trip. Two, eight, 14, five. Easy as race two, number two for Paul in Diamond Diamond. The graphic spins up race three, Chartin, and it looks this way with Ace Victory running over the 1,200 metres and for the first time in class four and a seven day backup. Second to none, last start winner carries an extra of four pounds. Must go has the hood off, the earplugs and the pacifiers go on. Foremost Teddy on debut has had the five trials. Lucky fee on wide draw again, but he did a good job at his first start. Up in trippers winning gold, winning hearts back in distance. Lucky quality wears a visor again, would fire champ. He ran eighth last time off a tough trip, tough trip behind Super Goldie and the good deal's best form so far has been down in class five. Lucky quality Paul leads ace victory, loyal Bobo and must go. Yeah, so there's no real clear leader in this race. Lucky quality goes forward and he's drawn the outside draw. So I think he might get there by default. I wouldn't be surprised if Zach's positive with ace victory with the lack of pace in the race and he goes forward as well. Loyal Bobo, now he's led in a couple of trials but hasn't led on race day so he might be a little bit more positive as well. It's a little bit of a guesswork there because there's no real um, leader in the race. Tom was out and about at Shah 10 on Friday morning and spoke to Hugh Bowman, Hugh Bowman, not only about Phoenix Light but also Wellington. Hugh, Phoenix Light uh, lining up for uh, dinner ship over 1,200 metres. He's, he's well rated. Uh, he looked to uh, get home pretty nicely, I thought, last time at Charton. Your verdict on the run? I was very pleased with him. He did finish off well, and there's no reason why we can't expect an improved performance from that. I think he's going along really well, and I think, you know, barrier eight's probably not too much of a negative. He'll just find his position in the middle of the pack somewhere and uh, ride him to hit the line, but I was pleased with him the other day. 
you rode him, I think, uh, 15th or 16th in some track work. Uh, he's also worked alongside uh, Telecom Dragon. How's, how's he been going in the mornings? Been going well, they both have, and they both line up on the weekend. So, look, I, I, they're both in racing in consistent form, both happy and healthy within themselves, moving well, and uh, both live chances this Sunday. What about uh, Hugh uh, Wellington in the the sprint? Uh, you're right here for, for Jamie Richards, your first time uh, partnering this uh, horse. Uh, how did you assess his trial the other day? He, he looked to, to move well on the all-weather, I thought. Yeah, he did. He, he went very well. He, he found the corner a little bit sharp, so I'm pleased I've had the opportunity to sit on his back in the lead-up to this weekend's Group 1 race. But, look, the horse is in good form. He, you know, he needs no introduction. He's already a multiple Group 1 winner. And, and I think it's going to be a very... I, I, I've got a suspicion it's going to be more of a testing race than maybe some of the sprints in recent times because of the fact that it's a full field and um, you know I think it'll be a high pressure event and I think that'll suit my horse. Lucky Swainess has obviously drawn uh, Barry at number five and he's he's your main opponent opponent uh, here and uh, you're coming into this uh, here third up. Uh, do you think do you think he's still got it as he is older than Lucky Swainess to, to 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 turn the tables on him? Well, I think Lucky Running is going to play a part, and I think Lucky Swainess has that tactical speed, and I think the high-pressure race, assuming that that's what it's going to be, will, will suit Lucky Swainess too. So we're under no illusion of where we sit in the pecking order, and we're not, we can't expect to see Wellington come out and give a, a career best performance either, but I think he's going well enough to run uh, as well, if not better, than he did in the international meeting, um, the international sprint. So if he can do that, then he'll certainly make his presence felt. There's Hugh. He's rivals in this race. Paul, as far as Phoenix Light goes, is Ace Victory, who ran fourth this Class 3 last weekend behind Wunderbar. He does have a wider draw. Carries £135, of course, for coming down in grade. Yeah, but this, wasn't this a strong race? You know, you had Kane Rising, Wunderbar, that, that really good clash between the two. And he sat just in behind them. He's obviously no match for those two, but he's now down on a grade. This doesn't look like a strong race whatsoever. Uh, Zach Burden will um, jump aboard. Uh, and uh, the wide draw he's got to overcome. But there's not much pace in the race, so I think you'll try and go forward, Zach, on him and get himself into a nice position. So I think he's one of the leading chances here down in great. He's out of the Benno Young stable and just grabbed for third there by ready to win at the winning post. Winning form now, second to none. It is Drew Barry number five this day. Beat top scorer. Doesn't go up too much in weight and drawn to get a similar trip on what we see here as he's ridden up turning for home. Yeah, and it was a nice win from him as well. Um, second to none did beat top scorer. He's run a couple of good races. Uh, so, look, he goes in for me as well. Uh, the horse is going to get a perfect run, similar to this one from Barrier 1. He's just going to carry the extra weight. Uh, Jamie Cow will jump aboard uh, this horse. And I thought he won with a little bit in hand, so he probably deserves that extra bit of weight. That is a member of the Francis Loy stable winning in second to none and uh, was too good by about three quarters of a length in that race. You're going to make a case for what was a really good effort by Lucky Fion, who's well back in the field as they turn for home. Sonic Boom better in this race. Loyal Bobo hasn't been able to quite capture what he's done at the trials as yet. Yeah, look, I am going to include him on a minor line, Law Bobo, because I wouldn't be surprised if, if we do. There is definitely a, a horse there, but I like the run here at Lucky Fion. It was a big price here. had shown nothing leading into it. I thought this was a wide open race. He was 80 Six to one, and look, he only got beaten look, well, half a length. You, you take out the winner, and there wasn't much between uh, second, third, and fourth by any stretch of the imagination. So he was doing his best work late uh, with that experience under his belt. Gonna go with him. Draws wide again, similar tactics, you think? I think they have to, yeah, go back and run on strongly. And he's on top. So he, he's on top. Well, hopefully, we'll get an each way price about him. Uh, that's lucky if you're on ace victory, downgraded, second to none, the last start winner, and loyal Bovo. We saw him as well. Uh, 6, 1, 2 and 10. And that is the preview for race number 3 which is the first leg of the opening treble. Race 4 now and we've got at the top of the book another class dropper upcoming here in Amazing Run and he is not wearing a tongue tie. I can Happy Day also drop in grade. More of Courage, he carries £12 less than last start. That's courtesy of a claim for Ellis Wong, at least most of it. Celtic Times draws barrier one. He's placed his last three out of four. Perfetto has the cheek pieces going on. Me Time on debut has had four trials. Smart Fighter cannot draw a gate. 
be feeling has his first look at Shah 10 and uh, down the bottom Club Soda raced over the 16.50 at Happy Valley last time. He's gone around in a very, very slowly run trial up at Chung Fa since. I can, Paul, might try and do an I give and lead all the way. Yeah, well, it works for his... Uh the same colours, isn't he? But look, he is a horse that can go forward. A smart fighter, I think he's just going to have to bite the bullet and go forward. Warm courage, he can be handy if he jumps well. He didn't jump too well a couple of starts ago. Super 10 used to lead on his air, but he's just lost a little bit of that early speed. And Celtic Times from an inside draw should get the perfect run. One of the class droppers, as mentioned, is Happy Daly, who's a well-rated horse. He's won three times course and distance off ratings 62, 53 and 48. Hugh Bowman and Dennis Ship combine here off a rating of 59. Yeah, exactly. So um, it's uh, a, a good run from him once again. He, he, as you say, is a really well-rated horse. Just drawn awkwardly in barrier 12, he might have to get back. But look, he, he doesn't... Uh, he looks like a win's coming pretty close for him, to be fair. He is running pretty well at the moment. I uh, just don't know if it's going to be this race, uh, personally, just from barrier 12, but uh, you can see him finishing off strongly once again. He's our first replay in race number four is Happy Daily. Our second replay, Celtic Times, is way overdue, Paul. He's got a lot in his favour this week. He's wide there turning for home. He's drawn barrier number one. He carries 129 pounds. He's played three from four course and distance. Is this his race? I think it is. Uh, he's going to get the perfect run in behind. Like, he could even lead if he wanted to, if it was that slow. But I think he'll get that uh, nice run uh, just in behind the pace. And, uh, you know, he's been very consistent. Horse, uh, Zach aboard from barrier one. He looks tough to beat for me. So, yeah, he's the one I'm going to end up with. You can see him in those blue colours. He finishes off this race really strongly. Again, a really nice uh, race. It was no match for Endeared, but Endeared's come out and run well since. 16 starts, five placings for Celtic Times. He's way overdue for that first win. Last replay is Perfetto, who runs second. He mixes his form at times. There's that gear edition of cheek pieces on. Had a very quiet trial up at Chung Fa. Following this, as he gets to the outside, He'd appear in the last run reminder a number of times, wouldn't he, this horse? He does, yeah, because he really catches the eye, hits the line strongly. So, look, he's definitely going to get his chance once again. Uh, Anton Hamlin aboard. Anton's got quite a good book of rides, I thought. And I just like the way he finished off really strongly. Fighting Machine has had a run since, but um, it was um, a good run from him. So, look, he's going to go in for me as well. And he's going to be written by, as Paul said, Antoine Hamlin, who you might be able to make a case for... Decent odds for a jockey's challenge. Yeah, he's got a few reasonable rides, I thought, Antoine. But I'm uh, going to go with uh, the five on top here, which is Celtic Times. To beat the six, Perfetto. Smart fighter. He just needs some sort of run. And one of the downgraders I'm going to go with is uh, number one, amazing run, Jamie Carr. This horse, two starts ago in particular, really caught the eye, and there was a lot of money for him as well. So he's now in the right grade, I think. Five, six, eleven, and one. That is race number four. And if you're a triple trio punter, the fourth is the first leg. The fifth on this Group 1 meeting on Sunday out at Sha Tin is a class for it to trophy race too. It's the Yanoi Tong Cup and Bonus Pal is on the class drop, as is Flying Mojito. Beer Palace has his third start over 1,600 here in Hong Kong. Gallant Crown, he goes back to the mile, but his best form, as far as wins go, is at Happy Valley over the 1,650. Owner's Praise plays the trip better draw than last time. Royal Pride gets a £10 claim. Up and up, cheek pieces go on. Tung Tai comes off. A chili Barber from the 1,000 to the 1,600. Blinkers off and Visor goes on him. And right down the bottom, Dragon Pride. Minus the Visor, Blinkers added. Horse of good luck. We've seen him lead uh, certainly in trials too, Paul, and just hasn't been able to run it out. To Gallant Crown Chateau Biato fairly handy to the speed. Yeah, he's, he has been handy when he's raced over 1600. Uh, so he's over that trip once again. Flying Mojito, one of the downgraders, has drawn nicely in five. He should get his opportunity. Uh, look, Bear Palace went back last time and they ran really slow. So we'll see what they do with him as well. But he's drawn a little bit awkwardly in barrier 12. Flying Mojito is in our first replay. He does have a seven next to his name, but this was up in class three last time. Two-time winner this grade. Five placings from 11 starts. Two-time winner from uh, limited goes over the 1,600. Wins off rating 59 and 51. He's running off a rating of 60. He looks ready to win, doesn't he? He's, he, he? As you say, he's won off that 59 before in the past. Comes back into the right grade, class four, and, and finished off this race nicely. As you say, it was a seventh, but there wasn't much between them at all. So, look, I 
think he's he's a horse that's um, one of the main chances in the race. He's going nicely enough here at the moment. And from a good draw, he'll get his opportunity. That's Beauty Crescent running second. He'll line up in the Classic Mile upcoming in a week or so's time. We've got Joyful Prosperity, who covered some ground here. Beato, eighth. Chateau, fifth. You've been a bit keen on Beer Palace since he's been here. Certainly in his last few starts as he's acclimatised and got fitter. Is he in your numbers again this week? Yeah, look, they ran really slow in this race. And uh, the, he he came off uh, this absolutely ridiculously slow pace and finished fourth in the end. This was a, this is now a second start in Class 4. He's drawn 12 again, so look, he's, he's just going to have to see what sort of run he does get. But uh, look, I, I, there's definitely a win for him in this grade. I've got no question about that. So with Hugh Bowman aboard, I, look, I'm willing to take a chance again with him once again. And uh, he, he was the one finishing off the best of anything from the back. A report for Beer Palace. Now, Chili Barber, he's like either a hot chili, one of those ones that makes your eyes water and go red and sweat, or one of the ones that aren't very hot. 1,000 to 1,600. What about him at the mile, though? Yeah, no, it's a decent step up, isn't it? But he's always looked like he'd won a mile because the way he races. He's drawn 13, so he's going to get back and run on. Look, I just thought it was too much of a big gap, 1,000 up to 1,600. So I looked at him a couple of times. I didn't put him in in the end, but uh, look, if he can cope with the rise in um, distance, then look, he, he is definitely one of the chances in the race, there's no question. But I've just got my little doubts there. He has been there once before, 1,600 metres. He's placed over 1,400, but his lone win does remain at his first start over the 1,000 metres. So cheers for race five. Yep, going to go keep with the Bears. Uh, hopefully Bears all round. So he's on top, Bears, Bears Palace, or Bear Palace, I should say. Fly Mojito, uh, Beato we spoke about. And Chateau, I think he can get across from his draw. Three, two, five and nine. There's a bit of a theme there. Beer Palace to beat Flying Mojito and Chateau's in the top four as well for Paul. <laughs> He'll be ringing AA straight after the program. We head on to race number six on this Sha Tin preview for Sunday. Fast buck at the top is a last start winner. That was the all weather. He carries an extra eight pounds for it as he comes back onto the turf. Super Legends gets a five pound claim for Angus Chung. Happy Fat Cat, cheek pieces come off him. Multi Super has the blinkers off and the cheek pieces going on. Telecom Dragons finish top four all season. Ruby Sailing plays two from three course and distance. The Khan is on debut. Crazy Treasures had excuses his first two starts. Hinakami Kagura's won a trial since we've last seen him. And we've got Champion Instinct and More Ice down the bottom. Both have been back to the trials also since their last start, Paul. Yeah, this was a bit more easy, this one with Happy Fat Cat in the race. He likes to go forward. Ruby Sailing's been uh, prominent, as has Super Legends. Uh, they won't be far away. Uh, Crazy Treasure again, he's drawn wide, so he's going to have a bit of excuse. Petra Theta, no one that needs to get a bit of, a bit of luck from his draw, and uh, Champion Instinct should be able to slot. More from Paul shortly with some replays. Firstly, though, Tom with the rider of the Khan, Karis Teton. Karis, the Khan who comes out of Casper Found Stable, came through the uh, ISG uh, Stable. Uh, you were on in him as most recent trial down the straight. What was your, your verdict and opinion on his performance that morning? Uh, yeah, he's, he's a lovely little horse. Uh, he has been improving uh, with each and every trials. And I thought his last trial was, uh, was decent. And uh, it seems like he's ready to go to races. Was the best part of that trial sort of the last 100 metres where he, he looked to go through the line well? Yeah, you would think so. Uh, it looked like that and it felt like that, like he sort of got stronger towards the end and uh, you know, I think Casper have the horse in a good shape. Barry Manners have been a little bit of an issue, he sort of missed it and I think one morning I was calling he played up in the, the gates as well. Um, any sort of concerns around those going into his first up assignment? I must say there's, there's been a big improvement in, uh, in his gate manners. Uh, Casper's done a lot of work at home. Uh, I jumped him out uh, a few days ago, and uh, he was pretty he was pretty good in there. So, you know, I think uh, that should uh, you know he doesn't go back to that again, and his behaviour will be good on race day. Just as a jockey, when you've got horses that are on there making their debuts and they, they do play up in the gates, they have got a little bit of a history for that. What do you need to be mindful of? Uh, is there any sort of characteristics they they might show that something could sort of set them off? Yeah, well, you know, with, with racing, there's so many horses inside those gate and. Uh, uh, you know, one horse just kick or, or make a noise and, and your, your, your young horse can, can really get upset. So I'll just have to try to uh, keep him as quiet as I can and sort of keep his mind focused, uh, you know. So, yeah, like I said, I'm just more focused about, uh, about the horse instead of worry about him in the gate. I think he's pretty good now, so. 
Quick comment on Taj Dragon, who's lining up in the, the Group 1 sprint for uh, Pierre Ung. Uh, he's coming into this with a, a recent trial. You were aboard. Were you satisfied with what he showed you at the trials and the year weather last week? Yeah, it's, of course. Uh, it's nice to get on, on a young horse like that. Uh, I think you know, he's, uh, he's, he's come on a, a long way. So, yeah, his, his recent trial was good. Uh, horse is in uh, is good shape. I galloped him this morning, and I was pretty happy with his, with his work. He got a big whack in the handicaps in terms of rating points because he was out of the handicap for his uh, Group 3 victory. What about the assignment at level weights and uh, coming back a, back a furlong as well? Uh, what are your thoughts on those sort of factors? Yeah, there's a few things that go, uh, go against him. But, uh, but I think, you know, of course, you know, you, you, you've got a horse like, like that now with that rating. What do you do with him, you know? So, you know, it's going to be hard, you know, taking on uh, one of the world's best sprinters and uh, all the other horses that's uh, like Wellington, lucky with you in a great race. So it's going to be an interesting race. Um, you know, I think, I think if, if, if the horse, uh, you know, get a good run and finish, finish, finish well behind those horses or uh, earn some money or closer, I think, I think the, the connection will be happy. Chris Teton there on the Khan and Taj Dragon. Some horses that have raced in Hong Kong. Paul is fast buck. This on the all-weather last time over the 1,200 metres. He has won on the turf over the 1,400 metres. Zach gets aboard this week from a better draw. What do you do with him in this race? Well, he got this race perfectly run to suit because it was a lot of pace in the race and he came off the, the fast speed, uh, speed and won really nicely. Back to 1,200 on the turf. I don't know if that's totally ideal um, with the big weight, so I was happy to watch him in this, this race. But, look, he, he'll definitely have it as Morris because he, he did win this race really nicely. Carried 127 pounds to win that race, did fast buck. Super Legends is our next replay. He ends up running second. He went off as a 1.6 favourite, was beaten at the end by the Absolute, but they really cleared out from the rest of this bed, didn't they? Yeah, there was lots of money for the Absolute, and he ran really well on debut, uh, this horse as well, and these two went uh, clear. So, look, I think he's, uh, he's ready to win. Um, super legends, he definitely goes in. And saying that I have got one to beat him, but you can see these two were, were the far superior horses on the day. Uh, and um, unfortunately, just got nutted on the day for punters that backed them at 1.6. And as you can see how far in front the rest of the Manu Power has finished down the track at Happy Valley since, but he did have an excuse. He pulled up lame in that race. The horse to beat Super Legends, Paul, is it this guy, Telecom Dragon? It is, actually. I, look, he's looked really good in his races. It was a really good run behind Storm Rider at last start, and Storm Rider's come out and bolted in again. So that really makes his form look very good with... Uh, Telecom Dragon, so I think he's uh, he's the one to beat. Hugh Bowman aboard. Uh, Hugh did ride him in this race, so he does know the horse as well. And uh, he's just a one-time winner from his six starts, but he, he probably should, arguably should have won two. When he ran that fourth, he came from an impossible position and then came out and won his second start. So he found one too good from there, but I think he, he can win this. And his, uh, Paul said he's bashed up a higher great opposition on the weekend, Storm Rider 2. Final replay is Hinakami Kagura, whose trial was better, but his race form needs to improve. Champion Instinct ran second here. He's off a rating of 43, stays at 43. He too has won a trial since uh, this race. He led all of the way in it. Ends up running third behind 80 light years in this replay. Yeah, and 80 light years is going to be one of the favourites later on in the card, I think, as well. So look, I, I like the run here from Champion Instinct. I thought he finished off the race really nicely. He's been a little consistent. He's won that recent trial. So, yeah, he's going to go in for me as well, the lightweight from Barrier 4. That is quite a breakdown for race number six, but it's Telecom Dragon to beat Super Legends. It is. Uh, that's how I see it. I think that uh, would be a popular Quinella, but uh, I've got six to beat two. Seven Patch of Theta. He's had two starts for a couple of thirds. Uh, now, he's been racing over the 1,000. He stepped up to the 1,200 and had no luck in the run, but he is drawn a little bit wide. And then Champion Instinct for fourth. Six, two, seven and 13. Hugh Bowman for Dennership to win race number six with Telecom Dragon. Race 7 sees an interesting runner returning, having only had the one start for a win back in July. We'll get to him shortly for the Taihing Handicap. Goko win is on the class drop. 
the one I mentioned is Enterprise Attack. Tongue tie goes on. He's had the two trials since he was scratched on the 15th of October. Colourful Emperor fourth behind Wunderbar last time. Sake wins a three-time course and distance winner. Sunny Darling arrives having won twice in Australia, 1,100 at sale and 1,250 on the Kensington track in Sydney when trained by Peter and Paul Snowden. Gorgeous win. He has only had the three starts for a win and a couple of placings. Show respect is now with Mark Newnham. Blinkers off, tongue tie off, hood goes on. Laugh Taylor's now with Manfred Mann who has removed the shadow roll. Gorgeous win, Paul. Is he probably going to be one of the shortest prize favourites of the day outside of Lucky Swainess? I'd say so. There's been plenty of uh, support from although Lucky, eight, uh, lucky um, 80 light years will take some support as well with his last start uh, dominant win. Colourful Emperor can lead this race. Sunny Darling's shown a bit of pace who is a debut runner here in Hong Kong. Uh, Sake win, uh, he's going to need luck from his wide draw. Good Enterprise Attack, the horse we are talking about at the start, he's um, only had the one start, one win. He should get a nice run. Here is that win of Enterprise Attack. It was last season, so we go all the way back to July. And the horse that he beats is Global Harmony. We know what he has done since then before his indiscretion on the weekend when he refused to jump. He did trial at Sha Tin on Friday morning to Global Harmony and he jumped really well in that. So he has uh, gone back the right way. We need to focus, Paul, though, on Enterprise Attack. It was a very impressive win. Very impressive. And uh, look, it would be a good training feat to get him sort of up and ready and running after that big break. But look, he won with plenty in hand. And he's obviously a nice horse and a persevered. They have, and uh, here's his trial recently up at Chungfa also. And uh, this he runs fourth behind Aero Invincible as the horse that ends up winning it. You can't miss him, though, with the chestnut colour and that big white blaze there just getting to fourth. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, yeah, he, he sort of was nice and relaxed as he came down here. He was to run once before, earlier, but uh, he did have a, a regular heart rhythm, so he didn't um, didn't race then. But they, they wouldn't race him unless they were very happy with him. He's drawn nicely in barrier number one. And it's, you know, it was more of a jump out, wasn't it? None of, nothing was really pushed, but he did what he had to do. He did. That is Enterprise Attack. Now, gorgeous win we've already seen on the speed map is likely going to get the perfect trip. He and a smart one in Raging Blizzard go to battle here as they're going to claim Ka Ying Cheer at the top of the straight. Yeah, and Ka Ying Cheer has been racing well. So, look, I thought it was a really nice run from him. And he's, he comes in here with a light weight. He's only had the three starts. He did beat Storm Rider, who's come out and bashed, as you said, bashed up a couple of uh, higher class horses uh, up in grade as well. So uh, he's going really nicely, this horse. Um, gorgeous win from Barrier 3 with Zach Purden aboard. He looks tough to beat for me. And that's a good report and uh, the on top selection for Paul in gorgeous win there. 80 light years you touched on too, Paul, that uh, he's going to take money following an impressive win last time. Here it is. It was over the 1,200 metres. He was down in class four. He has had four goes in this grade and yet to finish anywhere closer than fourth. Yeah, it's true. And, but he is in a bit of form at the moment. And uh, it was a, I thought it was a strong win here. Uh, I mean, Champion Instinct will, will race in the race previously, so we'll see how he goes. But look, he, he, he uh, got a nice run in front. He's going to get a nice run in this race as well. So look, I, I think he, he can uh, perform in this grade now that he's had this experience and he's had a bit of confidence with this win. And we'll see Champion Instinct run in the race prior too, so I can get a bit of a gauge on that form too. But gorgeous win too, good for them. I think so, yeah. He looks the one for me, so he's clearly on top. A gorgeous win to beat 80 light years, Enterprise attack. And I thought Colourful Emperor from the front can run a cheeky race. He's quite well rated as well. 9 11 4 5. And Zach Person for Paul to win race seven with the nine. Gorgeous win. Group 1 Racing arrives with race number 8, the Centenary Sprint Cup over the 1,200 metres and start time is at 4.40 local time. Lucky Swainess at the top, International Day winner last time. Wellington's won 10 times over the 1,200. Curry wonders now with Mark Newnham, cross nose band goes on him. Lucky with you second to Lucky Swainess on International Day. Victor the winner and Duke Wai both come out of the Bohinia Sprint Trophy. Taj Dragon won the Chinese Club Challenge Cup last start. Packing Treadmill goes back to the 1,200 metres. 
and Son Pak Fu having just his fourth run at Sha Tinalu's form so far has been across at Happy Valley. Lucky Swain S. Paul slots in beautifully from Barrier 5. Yeah, look, he's got a bit of pace underneath him with track, packing treadmill and side success, so he can sort of stay alongside those. And then these two horses that come across, Wizkid and Victor the winner, I think they can come across, give him a bit of cover. I think Wellington will just follow Lucky Swain S. wherever he goes, because one's drawn five, one's drawn six. Unlucky with you will follow the pair. The man aboard Lucky Swain S., though, is Zach Person. Here's Zach with Tom. Zach Lucky Swainess, the world's best sprinter, got his just desserts last time out in the international uh, mile. Uh, where did that performance rate amongst his top level victories here so far, do you think? Uh, it's not easy to win any international race in Hong Kong, so you've got to put it towards the top of his list. It wasn't one of his most devastating performances. I think the um, champion sprint towards the end of last season was probably his, his best performance, but. Um, it was, a, it was not far off that, um, and I think the horse looks like he's going well. He got beaten, of course, in his first two runs this season, and there were obviously mitigating circumstances to both of those, but uh, when he was able to win the, the jockey club sprint by a neck, is there, is there something like a, a moment or something you can sort of pinpoint that he had sort of turned the corner and come on because you were quite confident leading into the, the international sprint this year? He's just taken a few runs to come to hand, that's all. He was carrying big weights, you know, he struck the wet track, he had a fair few things going against him and he, he just needed a little bit of racing to get, get back to where he needed to be and, and he showed that in December and I think he's going just as well. When you look back at sort of the end of last campaign and beginning of this campaign, for, for want of a better word, he probably raced in a few unconventional races. Does it just sort of show what a, a brilliant animal that he is, that he can come back from some of those sort of races carrying weight as well? Yeah, he's obviously a very talented horse, we know that, um, and they, they kept, they're not machines, they can't be at their absolute best or, or peak all the time, you know, the, the preparations are designed to get them to, to peak at certain stages of their season and he needed to peak in December and, and that's what he did. You were away for his last trial, Matthew Poon was on board but uh, off the video and you've, you've galloped him since yesterday, um, how's, he, how's he feeling coming into the weekend? I think he's feeling pretty good. Um, you know, I, th I think he's he's taken another little step again. So uh, I'm looking forward to the race. It's a tricky gate. So although if people look at five and think it it looks like it's a good gate, it looks a little bit tricky to me with the, the runners drawn inside me. So we just need a little bit of luck early to hopefully get him out and get a nice spot. It's a few runners in the race as well. So you know, a few horses shouldn't be there could get in the way of a few other runners, so it's just a, a matter of navigating the right path on him and giving him his chance. <laughs> there he is, Zach. As usual, pulling no punches. Paul Tars Dragon, he should be in the race, shouldn't he? What he did last time, he straight into group and group racing success. Yeah, he did. He ran really well, but he, look, he had the conditions to suit, the knee in this race. This is going to be a lot, lot tougher from uh, barrier number eight. So, look, I just want to see what he does up against these Group 1 horses. But he's back in trip. I don't know if the 1,200, again, is, is totally ideal for him. But he's a very progressive horse. But this might be just a bridge too far for him at this stage of his career. He had a quiet trial behind Gorgeous Win Ren. Third beaten away in it, but he was under a hold in that trial. Wasn't asked to do too much. Karis Teton rides him for Pierre Rung. So that's Taj Dragon winning the Chinese Club Challenge Cup. We're going to 1,000 metre group racing now with the Bohemia Sprint Trophy. Wizkid, all of his form's been over a 1,000 as far as winning goes. Victor, the winner, he'll appreciate the step back up in Trip Money, Paul, and uh, he's down to 126 pounds from the 135 in this. Yeah, he is, and uh, you can see um, Wizkid and Victor, the winner, will probably put pressure on each other. So they might be, they might un, sort of be the oncoming of each horse. Uh, I thought the probably the best run was packing treadmill in this. That's going to be suited by the 1200. Look, I've got none of these horses in, to be honest, but Packing Treadmill was probably the closest one I would have put in. He's a five-time winner over the 1,200 is Packing Treadmill, so you're being very diplomatic there. Uh, what about uh, Courier Wonder? He hasn't been seen for a while. We haven't seen him since July. Been through a couple of stables since leaving John Size. Firstly, Danny Shum, who gave him two trials. Now Mark Newnham, who gave him this one down the straight. Yeah, a trial nicely enough, but again, he's up against Group 1 horses. Hasn't won for two or three years now. 
uh, look, I like to see what he can do up against these top horses. But um, look, we, on his day, he, he was a very good horse. Don't get me wrong. It's just, you know, as you say, he's had a couple of stables and um, things have gone a little bit different for him. So I'm more than happy to watch him as well. He is a two-time winner first up, but that was some time ago. Lucky Swain is too good for them? I think so, yeah. Look, he, he was a very good win from him. And if he can get into a nice position, I think he'll be tough to beat. Wellington's obviously the toughest. They're the two big boys, one and two. Uh, look, lucky with you, it was a really good run from him international day. He, he seems to be going well, so he gets in there for third. And side success, he's a group winner already earlier this season, and he's going to get a nice run th um, from barrier number three. He did beat Lucky Swainess too. One, two, five and three. Lucky Swainess to go back to back in the Centenary Sprint Cup for Paul. The second last at Sha Tin on Sunday is over the 1600 metres. It's a class three with Sweet Encounter having placed his last two. I Am The Boss has blinkers going on. Beauty Verse wears blinkers for the first time also. Accolade start mixing his form a little bit. He has won a trial since his last outing as well. Aestheticism's won two from his last three and both those wins, those two wins have been over 1600. He does drop back in trip for this. Beauty Missile carries an extra 10 pounds on his last start sixth for a senior rider. Murado's best form has been at 1400 metres and Starmac has the cheek pieces going on for the first time. Rolling onto the speed map Paul and I keep winning so far has been poorly named. Yes isn't he? He, he, he keeps going to the front though. Uh, he likes to put himself on the pace I think he can lead. Look Flamingo Trillion will get a perfect run in behind. Murado can go forward beauty missile Accolade start and the rest of the field generally get back. Sweet Encounter is the big query for me because when he won his first couple of races in Hong Kong, over shorter trips as well, he would just lead and, and all be right on the pace. He went back at all his runs this season. We'll see what he does this race, but there is the option for him to go forward. We'll have a look at his last start shortly, Sweet Encounter, but we need to hear from Tom with David Hayes talking Star Mac as I look at the right camera. <laughs> David Starmack uh, lining up this weekend in uh, race number nine. How's he come through his uh, last start performance and uh, what did you make of his, uh, his nice uh, seventh placing where he looked to be running on a bit at the end? Yeah, he was. Uh, I was it, uh, his run before was more eye-catching where he came from the back after missing the start. This one he got in traffic, uh, but he was still good, doing his best late. Uh, I, I think he's a very lightly race horse in Australia one start, so he's still learning, making a few mistakes, but when he gets his act together, he'll have no trouble winning races here in Hong Kong. He's trying uh, this weekend uh, in race number nine, and he raced over the, the mile in his last two starts. Is, he, is that his sort of preferred trip, or do you think he'll get a bit further in time, you, you believe? I think he's, for sure, 2,000 metres, he'll even be better, but we've put the side winkers on just to smarten him up and hopefully help his race craft a bit. He obviously has an entry for the, the classic mile and there's been a, a few defections from that by the sounds of things already. What was the, the thought process on running this week? Did you just think he needed that extra run going into the mile? I, I thought of 63, he needed a few more points. Um, but as it's turned out, he, he won't. But uh, it, it'll be good education for him. And if he pulls up well, we'll back him up. There's been a lot of horses back up and run well in the past. That is David Hayes uh, talking uh, Star Mac there. Sweet Encounter, Paul, you spoke about him last time and uh, where he might be on the speed map that he could go forward. He's wide here. He has a draw of Barry number 13. I Am The Boss was held up on debut for part of the straight. He has trialled well since up at uh, Chungfa, I think it was. Wherever the trial was, it was quite impressive. Yeah, look, I thought um, it was a really good run here from Sweet Encounter and he sort of um, almost got to the lead here and it just sort of came to the end of it because he did have a hard run. He had to... Um, uh, basically come around the whole field and just got uh, beaten by Global Harmony who, who got him late. So he's coming back into a bit of form. He's got a big weight and a wide draw. So I'll be interested to see what tactics they do employ with him. And one more replay to have a look at. And you were tickled pink with the run of Flamingo Trillion last time. Yeah, I see what you did there. I was. I thought it was a great run um, behind Chang Chang Glory. And, of course, Chang Chang Glory's been uh, winning, uh, you know, them in a row at the moment. So, look, I thought he's going to get the perfect run. So, on the map, he's the one for me, uh, Flamingo Trillion. He should get a really nice run just in behind the pace. Flagship Warrior's been racing really well um, recently, and it was a, a nice run um, from him as well. So, I wanted to include him. You can see him finishing off strongly. These sort of four horses went clear. The two in this race, 
the 11 and the 1 that you see on screen there, I think are two good chances in this race. And you're very keen on the 11. He's your best bet of the day, Flamingo Trillion. Flagship Warrior in for second. Uh, he's in. No, he's not the best, but I have got Flamingo Trillion on top. Uh, I do like one uh, earlier on, so uh, later on actually. Flamingo Trillion uh, on top to beat Flagship Warrior. Star Mac, we heard from David Hayes there in Sweet Encounter. 11, 5, 13 and 1. I do like one in the last. OK. It was going to be Flamingo Trillion, but wasn't it? Yeah, I changed my mind. Yeah. OK, only half listened to in the office. So Flamingo <laughs> Trillion to win race 9. It was number 11. Final race, and it's a good race as always. Race number 10, the last over the 1,400 metres. And Temra Blitz, he led up last time, which might not be his go, but no one else wanted to take the lead off him. Amazing victory, he's a two-time course and distance winner. Simba's now with Tony Cruz. Master of Fortune, all of his wins have been further. Araki Summit comes up in grade after winning over 1,400 in Class 4 last time. Beauty fits racing so well. Green and White has a pretty good record over the trip despite that last start defeat. Amazing Duck has a one next to his name. June Planet, he's first up since October. He had an irregular heart rhythm and down the bottom Forever Charm wears a tongue tie for the first time. Amazing Duck and Fun Together who's been flying Paul, both of them have one's next to their name. Yeah, so they should go both go forward, uh, although fun to give us drawn wide, he might have to work a bit. Araki Summit's another one drawn wide that likes to go forward. Tamara Blitz, as you mentioned, led last night, but he didn't didn't like it, I don't think. Didn't really suit him, so he'll take a sit. Green and white should get a nice run, and Beauty Fit's got a lot better draw this time. We're going straight to Tom with the Zach Person to find out if Green and White can bounce back from that uh, defeat last time. Green and white going around in the last for, for Ricky Yu. Um, he's had a number of ordinary draws, but he has been able to, to win two races. What was your verdict on his last run? Because he was 57 days between runs too. Oh, I think that sums it up, right? He was at an all-time high in the ratings. He had a setback in training and, and had a time between runs. He drew wide, rolled forward. He just blew up. His condition just gave out, so it was a good run. You know, it was a horse that was missing the start, missing the start badly in all these early races. And last start, he, it's the best he's begun. So he's starting to work it out. Um, and if he can put himself in the right spot, he's going to be a chance. He's won those two races covering ground, both of those sort of about uh, midfield. You mentioned he's not the, the quickest away, but have, we haven't seen the best of him yet, I don't think, have we? He, he hasn't been helping himself. When you're missing the start and you can't get into stride and you're getting shuffled out the back all the time uh, and then he was a bit green in amongst runners and didn't have a turn of foot, an immediate turn of foot. It's hard when you're back in the field and the gap's there and you want to take it but these wheels are spinning by the time you get there it closes so it's not, uh, it's, it's not easy when they don't really know what they're doing but he's starting to put it together uh, and I think there's more there. More there. That is green and white. This is Auraki Summit winning last time. Paul, he's on the pace here, leading winning data up towards the home turn. Ended up beating him by three and a quarter, so he didn't just win. He bolted in. Wide draw, barrier 13, so much wider than this win, which was from barrier five, and back into class three, where he's yet to run top four. Yeah, so that's a little query I had with him. Uh, the wide draw, I think, is going to be tough for him as well. Look, he, look, he is obviously getting near this horse, and he did uh, win this race uh, really nicely. I mean, winning data had won a couple in a row before that, so uh, he was a horse in form. So, look, a, a really nice win from him. It's just whether he can come back up here with those things that you mentioned, the uh, up and grade and the wide draw. I'm not so sure. I, I, I left him out then. The duck was big odds in this race. He trolled up OK, but hadn't been able to produce it on race day until this race. Beauty Fit, there's nothing wrong with uh, his form, is there? He is your best, isn't he, Beauty Fit? We'll get it right finally. Yeah, I, I do like him in this, because he's drawn nicely barrier four, and the handicappers have been very kind to him. They haven't put him up for running placings in his last two starts. Sometimes they sneak them up one or two, but uh, he hasn't been touched. So uh, as such, I think... Um, he, he can get a lovely run behind from barrier four and this could be his race. Now, we've probably said that a few times already and he's gone close, but one thing is for certain, he'll give you a run for your money. He is. He's going so well without winning beauty fit. Can't be doing much more than that. Simba's now with Tony Cruz. He's spent some time up in Chung Fa. Went back to last in this trial. It was a field of five, as you can see. Gets to the outside, runs home well and has won over the 1,400 off 
a rating of 71. Yeah, so he's on the right rating. Now, again, he's drawn wide in barrier number 11. I mean, it was a nice enough trial. He, he did what he had to do and he won well, but, I mean, none of these horses were pushed out, so we, we haven't really seen him under any pressure at this stage, but uh, what he did, he did nice enough. Look, I'm, I'm happy to watch him, though, with the new stable for the first time. He is not out, but uh, Beauty Fit is certainly in. Yeah, we've got Beauty Fit on top here. I think we can... Uh, it's a tough race, but uh, look, he's so consistent. Uh, I think, we'll, as such, it being a, a good race, you might get a decent price for a consistent horse. Amazing victories caught the eye at his last couple of starts. He's run second of an 80 rating. He's at 75. We heard from Zach Green and White. Another very consistent horse is Sweet Briar. He goes in there on a minor line. 7 2 8, 10. That is the last on a Group 1 day of racing at Sha Tin on Sunday. Ten races, 8 plus 3, and the first gets underway at 1 o'clock.